Hi, it's Bree here from Eagle Heart Beads. Today I'm going to give you a video tutorial on how to make a beaded orange shirt day pin, either using the beadwork kits provided by myself or using your own materials. Okay, so as you open up your beadwork kit, you'll notice that there is a list of materials that are included and you also need a pen or a Sharpie marker and scissors. So you've got your three different kinds of beads. You've got your needle and your thread and your um, pin backing. And then you also have a t-shirt stencil, a piece of cardstock, which we'll use at the end. And this is your beading foundation. Some of the kits are orange and some of them are white. And then you've got your piece of moose hide for the backing. So what you'll do is the more opaque orange beads will be the main color. And then the black beads will be for the outline and the other more like they're a bit shinier, have a bit more sparkle to them. Those will be for the edging. So you can actually keep those in the bag. Okay, so we've got our beads out on our mat here and I have them out, out on my beading mat. You can use anything that is a bit more like textured, like a piece of felt um, or a blanket or a pillowcase or something. You just don't wanna be beading on a um, like wooden surface or anything where the beads will slip around too much and make it hard to pick up. So your first step is you are going to cut out your shirt stencil. You want to try and cut with pretty straight lines because this is going to make your outline. And then you're going to take your felted foundation and you are going to outline your stencil using your pen or your marker. All right, and once you have your outline, you're gonna take your scissors and you're just gonna round the corners of your beading foundation. Um, you don't have to do this, but I like to because otherwise my thread kind of gets caught in these little edges. So you're going to unhook your pin backing and just set it aside for now. You don't need it quite yet. And then you're going to unwrap your thread here. It gave you probably quite a bit more than you'll need, but it's better to have too much thread than not enough thread. So you're just going to gently unwind this, just making sure that it doesn't get tangled. You don't want to pull it all out at once because knotted thread is 
no fun. It takes a long time to get those knots out. So you're just gonna keep unwinding and kind of pulling it off to the side here. And this is Nymo thread, size D. So it's a special kind of thread for beading specifically. Um, it's kind of like sturdier than regular sewing thread um, and kind of more towards the side of like fishing line. So once you get your thread, you just want to kind of stretch out each segment of it, just kind of pulling really tightly. Again, just making sure that you don't get any knots in the in the end. So by stretching your thread, um, this makes it nice and straight. So you'll notice how this part that hasn't been stretched yet is all curly. And while you're beating, that's going to be really, really tough to work with because it's just going to keep getting knotted and in your way. So you can even go at it again a couple times just to, it was pretty tightly wound. So you just really want to make sure that it's nice and flat for when you're beating. And what I'm going to do is you don't have to do this. It's more um, just another way of, this is beeswax, so it just conditions your thread, again, to stop it from getting knotted. But you don't have to do this when you're doing flat stitch. It's more important for when you're doing fringe earrings. But I still like to, just because it, yeah, it keeps it nice and nice and straight. All right, and then you're gonna go ahead and you are going to thread your needle. So it's gonna look like this. So you're gonna leave about, I don't know, this much room on your one end and then you are going to go to the end of your longer piece and you're just going to make a knot. So what I do is I take the thread underneath the needle, hold it there with my finger, and then I just wrap around four or five times, still holding it pretty tightly. And then you are just going to push down that thread that has been wrapped around to the bottom of the needle and hold on tightly and pull it all the way down to the very bottom. And now you've got a little knot there. And then you are going to start with the outline. So when we do flat stitch, we always make sure to come up the bottom And then you are going to add on your beads, go back down at the end. So you always want to make sure that you're coming up before you're putting beads on. So to start, come up right smack in the middle of that outline there. I like to come up not quite on a corner, um, just kind of somewhere in the middle here. Pull all the way through and then it's knotted at the back here. And then you can start picking up your beads. So we're going to use the black ones. I'm going to pick up four beads and then pull it through down to the bottom. And then I am going to kind of use my needle to pull it down, pull them down to the end where I came up. This will help me gauge how much space is needed until I come down on the other side. So then 
that looks about right. And then I'm going to come down the front there, pull all the way through, and then you are going to tack down these four beads. So you can tack them each down individually. Um, it does give a bit of a cleaner look, um, or you can tack every second one down. So for this, I'm going to tack every second one down. So I'm going to come up right in the middle of those four beads. And I'm making sure that I'm coming up on my outline. And then you are going to bead down onto the other side of that thread to tack down these first four beads. So there we go. And then I'm going to come up, I'm going to try and come up exactly where I finished off of these, um, the top of these four beads. I'm going to come up and then I'm going to pick up four more, pull down, use my needle to pull them down to see where I need to come down on in front of those beads. There we go. And then I kind of use my thumb to just kind of line them up nicely. I'm going to come up in the middle of those new four beads and come down in pretty much the same spot that you came up on the other side. Just make sure that you're beating up one side of the four, down the other side of the four so that you're tacking those beads down. And then I'm going to come up in pretty much the same spot at the front of this row. And then when you come to a spot where you're not sure how many beads are going to fit there, I'm going to pick up three because it looks like it's about three. Yeah, it's about three. Pull down. Come down the other side. And then you can kind of, you can tack down the front, you can tack down the back when it's an odd number. I'm going to tack down the back here. And then the sleeve is a bit tricky. So you're going to come up kind of beside that last bead there, not right in front. So to follow the outline, I'm going to pick up four beads. So this sleeve is about five beads long, so you can either just pick up five beads or you can pick up four and then just add another one on. If you pick up too many beads, then you just need to unthread your needle. So if you pick up too many beads, Say I've done, or if, so I'm on the back side of the foundation right now. If you pick up beads and you realize, oh no, I haven't gone through the top yet. Then you are just going to unthread your needle, put it off to the side there. And then you just got to pull your beads through off of your thread. And that's fine. You're just going to re-thread your needle again. And then you're going to follow this outline all the way around. OK, 
Okay, so once your outline's done, then you are going to start filling, filling it in with the orange beads. So I am going to start at the very bottom and I'm just going to kind of fill in straight lines all the way through the center part and then I'm going to go in and do the sleeve separately. So I'm going to pick up four beads, come down the other side, and tack them down. And although you don't have an outline to follow through where to come up and down, you can just follow, now that you have your outline, you can follow all the way along the outline straight, and then you'll have that one straight line that you can follow all the way back down. And I'm gonna keep filling that in and then leave the sleeves for now. Okay, so after you've done all your straight lines in the midsection here, you are going to do the sleeves, which are a little bit trickier, but um, you're still going to be moving in straight lines. So I'm going to start from the corner here and just do a straight line all the way up to the midsection and then keep going along the sleeve in straight lines. So I'm going to start in this corner, very close to the edge of the black beads. I'm going to pick up four. Straighten them out, come back down, and then tack those on down. Okay, so once you have it all beaded, then we're just going to cut right along the outline black beads. And you can cut pretty close, but just keep in mind that on the other side you do have the threading, so you don't want to accidentally snip any of those threads. Okay, so next you're going to take your piece of cardstock and your moose hide and your marker and you're just going to draw a rough outline of your pin on the cardstock. And 
and the cardstock is just to stabilize your pin a bit better because after you've beaded the foundation you can tell it gets a little bit warped and then you're going to cut this just a very general kind of outline because you still want you just want it to fit with um, some of the edges still showing with the cardstock and then you're going to um, trace a pretty accurate outline of the moose hide and then once you cut it you're just going to make sure that there's no um, sharpie marks so you can cut it kind of just inside your marker outline so once you cut out the outline of your moose hide um, it's going to look something like this so you've got your beaded piece on this side, you've got your cardstock um, just on the inner part of the backing. Um, you can use any material for this really, but just something, you want something that's hard um, and is pretty, pretty thin because you don't want this to be too bulky. And then you want to line up your moose hide to make sure that it's just flush with the edging of the beading foundation. So if you need to go in and make any more adjustments with your cutting, then now is the time to do that. Okay, so next you're going to make your holes for your pin backing. So the pin backing is actually going to, like the bar is gonna be on this side of the moose hide, and then the actual clip is gonna be on the outside. So these two ends and the pin clip are going to be on this side of the moose hide. So you're going to make your, mark your holes underneath the one end and then underneath the other end. And then double check that you kind of have those in the right spot. Okay, so to cut your holes, just kind of take your scissors and start kind of poking your way through. You can kind of fold it over and snip it until you make a hole. And you just want it big enough to be able to fit the pin backing up through both sides. So this hole might be, want to be a little bit bigger than the other, um, but make sure you don't make them too big initially. So err on the side of having smaller holes and then you can always make them bigger later on. Okay, so once you've made your holes, you're just gonna unclip your pin and you're gonna go in through one side of the moose hide and then you're gonna stick both ends up through that hole that you just made and if they don't come through then you're going to want to go back and kind of expand that hole a bit. So see this end came through for me here but this end might need to be made a little bigger. Okay, so I got that through there, and then you can close up your pin. And so this is what the back of the pin is going to look like. Okay, so now I usually glue down my moose hide. just roughly to hold it in place so that it doesn't move around while you're doing your edging. Although you can just hold it in place, I, I also have done that. Okay, so once you have your moose hide all secured down, 
then we're going to start the edging. So you're going to take the other orange beads that are a bit shinier, put them out on your mat, and then you're going to take that other piece of thread that we had saved, and then you're going to do the same thing that we had done before for beading the body of the pin. So you're going to thread your needle, and then you're going to pull it so that just you have a little bit of a tail, and then you're going to make a knot at the longer end. Wrap it around a few times, and then pull it, that knot, all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so then for the edging, you're going to start again kind of not at right at a corner, you're going to start kind of somewhere in the middle, and you're going to come, you're going to take your needle on the inside of the moose hide, so in between the moose hide and your beadwork, and you're going to bring the needle up right in the middle of the hide. So you're threading on the inside of the hide and you're coming up right in the middle of the hide on the hide's edge. So your string is kind of coming right up through the center of the um, outside of the hide. And then see your knot is on the inside there, it's hidden. So then what you're going to do is you're going to pick up one bead. So for edging, we bead one at a time for this kind of edging. And then you're going to come, uh, bring your needle through the moose hide and through the beading foundation felt, making sure that you don't um, come up in between your beads that you tack down. So you just want to, you just want to hit the felt. You don't want to hit kind of in between your outline and your orange beads. And you're going to come through the moose hide and the felt about a bead whip, like so. You're going to pull through, and then you're going to come up the bead on the opposite side of where that thread is coming through right now. So you're going to come up through just the bead, and you're going to pull tight. So now this bead is flush with holding together both the moose backing and the beaded foundation. So then we're just going to continue on like this throughout the whole, the whole pin. So again, bead width apart, push your needle through both the moose hide and the beading foundation. You're going to pull, and then you see how this thread has joined now that your previous bead with this bead. And then to finish it off, you're going to come through just that bead. And you're going to pull nice and tight. And now it's there and it's secured. So again, pick up your bead, bead width apart through your moose hide and your foundation, pull bring your needle up through that bead that you just threaded, pull nice and tight. And you don't have to worry about doing anything different on the corners. Um, you just continue edging as you were. Make sure you're pulling nice and tight in between. To really secure that backing with your beadwork. Bead with the part even on the corners. And 
see, come around there nice and evenly. Pull nice and tight. And you're just gonna continue this all the way around the edge. So now when you come to your final bead before the bead that you started off at, I'm just going to show you how to finish off your thread so that it fits nicely. So you're going to come up through your last bead here. And then what you're going to do is you are going to come through the very top of your very first bead and you're going to come between the top and you're just going to come through the bead. So you don't want to come through any of the foundation or the backing. So you kind of got to tilt your needle a bit so that you can come through the top and then through the bottom of that bead. And you're going to pull so that see that top thread connects with your first bead. And then you're going to thread through the foundation to um, to the backing of the moose hide, so in reverse, you're just going to thread through right underneath that bead that you just came through. And that's pretty much it. Usually I come back and forth a couple times just to make sure that it's secure, but the moose hide in general is quite sturdy so if you put your needle through once already it's pretty secure but I still go back and forth just a couple times just to be sure and then you're just gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut just right pull nice and tight and cut right close to the hide to finish off your thread so now your orange shirt day pin is complete and ready to be attached to tote bags or jacket or baseball caps. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and be sure to follow my Instagram at eagleheartbeads for more updates.